So I know you guys heard that exhaust system and that thing doesn't sound anything like this bad boy. This red car sounds like a spaceship while this one actually sounds like a proper car. But today's video is focusing on this Tesla right over here. And you guys saw in the last couple of videos, this Tesla um, is my wife's. I got this from my wife as her uh, her push present and whatnot. And she absolutely loves this car. I actually absolutely love this car. Um, there's a lot of things that I love about EV cars nowadays. I'm not just an EV fanatic, as you guys know. Um, I love building custom cars. This is my E91 M3, fully custom. Took me over a year to build this. Um, and then also I have my Audi R8 that I absolutely love. Both of them are manuals, both of them are V8s. But when it comes to daily driving, I absolutely love electric cars. I have my BMW i3 that's up for sale currently um, because I don't really need two EVs. Um, and this is the pretty much the car to replace it, which again is my wife's with an absolute amazing spec. This one, we ended up picking it up literally less than a week ago. I believe last, thir oh, actually today's Thursday. So literally a week ago, I flew down to San Diego to pick up this brand new Model 3. This is a 2023 Model 3 with the beautiful red paint and the white interior. I think this white interior absolutely slaps it's literally one of the main reasons that I actually started to like Tesla's is that Tesla is one of the few cars that make this absolutely beautiful interior. That infotainment system is the best of the best. This car in terms of technology is miles, miles past BMW and any other regular car um, that's within this price range at least. I'm sure there's probably more expensive cars out there that probably matches this technology with this performance. For being a thirty dollars to $40,000 car, this thing is pretty sick. In today's video, I'm not going to be talking about what I love, what I hate, or anything like that with Tesla. Just currently, I, I just want to mention a few things that I, I'm just very, very, very unhappy with um, when picking up a brand new Tesla. Now, when you pick up any new car, which I've never done before, um, this is a brand new car to me, my first brand new car, brand new car to my wife, her first new brand car, brand new car. And I would just assume a brand new car just would be double checked and thoroughly checked before actually uh, being sent off to its new owner. Now, there's a lot of memes going on online about Teslas and McLarens just having terrible gaps from the factory. Um, and that unfortunately is kind of true. And I saw that with this one, I saw it with my dad's. Um, and if you guys actually look at the, the earlier years of the Model 3, the, the gaps were absolutely horrendous. And the fit and finish is just an absolute joke. I'm gonna be popping up a few fit and finishes of Tesla just from the factory. This is up, some people picked up some of their Teslas. Um, I'm gonna show you guys issues that I'm having with my Tesla. And the topic of today's video is pretty much gonna be talking about um, the issues that I saw with my Tesla. And if you guys ever wanna get a Tesla, a brand new one, check these things before you actually sign the contract because once you sign, unless it's interior related, they're not gonna actually warranty it. This car brand new does come bumper to bumper, factory warranty with anything that possibly can break in the interior of the car and exterior in terms of electronics. But in terms of paint, there are two imperfections with this car that they will not fix because I already pretty much signed off saying the car looked great, yada, yada, yada. And actually, when you, if you ever, ever purchase a Tesla, you pretty much do it all from your phone. So you pretty much do it before you even pick up the car. So long story short, I really didn't even get to look at the car prior to purchase it. So if you guys want to make sure what exactly you're getting, make sure you look at it before click that final button, which is confirm or whatever. It's like the literally the final button saying confirm pickup. Before you confirm pickup, just review the car and I'll show you guys why. Now looking at it from a distance, this car honestly is really, really, really good. For those of you guys who ever heard of fish eye, it does, I don't know if it's called fish eye or something eye in the paint. Uh, basically this car has a lot of it, but it's not a big deal to me because again, as long as it's factory paint and it's not going to chip away and it looks good from a distance, I'm okay with that. I mean, German cars don't actually have that issue, which I'm super happy about, but I noticed a lot of Japanese and American cars um, have that issue. Not a big deal. Again, the main concern is this right over here. I don't know if you guys can kind of see this little splash effect. That is not dirt. That's not dirty. That pretty much I saw it on the first drive of this car, and I was like, what is going on there? This looks like something to do with either the plastics or something. I don't know what this is. Uh, it just kind of looks like a fade splash effect on there and I and I had the detail team at Tesla actually go over this and clean it and it still won't come off so I'm thinking that's either a polishing issue or a paint issue so that is the first paint imperfection that I found the second one's actually right here in the quarter panel and this is actually a funny section uh, to find a problem because most Teslas actually have really bad gap issues right over here um, have either like like tail light issues over here um, and in this case actually has um, some issues with the paint so I don't know why this section with the Tesla manufacturing always has an issue but if you guys look over here when I just go my fingers right over it you guys can see all the dirt around it but look at right here and right there that right there is dirt underneath the paint and the clear coat and it's pretty much just painted over and clear coated over um i, I thought this was like just dirt on it but no this is actually underneath the clear coat and uh that is something you could probably mention and they could probably get that fixed um before you actually click the confirm but once you confirm that you picked it up and drove it off the lot 
that is officially your problem because they don't know if that happened uh, while you were driving. So that is the only major thing that you have to make sure is just the paint because um, everything else, like I said, you guys can get it warranty within 50,000 miles when buying a brand new Tesla. But everything else really doesn't matter. It's just pretty much the paint. The paint, they will not guarantee as soon as you drive it off the lot. Um, so that is something you guys need to really look out for. Um, and I didn't think I'll fall victim to this because this is a 2023 um, Model 3. They had five or six years to get this right and they still didn't get it right. So uh, long story short, it still seems like an issue they are having. Now talking about the infamous gaps, if you guys look over here on this door, this door is perfectly shut. So if you guys actually see it, if I go ahead and open up the door and shut it really, really, really hard, you guys can see this door is poking out this trim piece is poking out. I've seen actually worse. I've seen literally this trim piece being halfway out and this door being halfway out. This they can actually fix no problem. I already have a service appointment set up for this. They're gonna go ahead and readjust everything and close the door. I could probably do it right here in the shop, no problem. It is a super easy fix, but having a brand new car with warranty, I'm just not gonna touch it because I don't need to touch it. Come around to this side actually. Uh, this side's actually really, really, really good. Super happy about that. But for some reason, when I open the door, it's really sticky. Like, I don't know if it's the, the, the hinge right over here. I don't know if there's something with like the seals, but long story short, the door is really hard to pull for some reason. Shutting it, not a problem, but pulling it, it's like I'm pulling on a, a door that's glued shut, which is super weird. I actually love these door handles. These door handles remind me of the Lamborghinis. These are pretty nice. So yeah, the two rear doors will be fixed. I, I did submit a service request on the two rear doors, so I'm not tripping whatsoever about that. Um, and actually, another thing I had to submit and a service request on the exterior of the car is actually these wheels. So every single one of these wheels, for those of you guys who don't know Teslas, um, they pretty much put like a cover on top of their rim. The rim looks really good underneath, but they put these plastic covers on them for aerodynamic purposes for better rim. Range. And long story short, these caps while you're driving just make the worst squeaking sound back and forth, back and forth. So when you're driving in low speeds, you don't hear from the inside of the car, but you can hear it when someone's like driving this car kind of next to you very, very, very slowly. It just sounds like everything is like sounds so cheap. It sounds like plastics are just, you know, rubbing against each other. And it just sounds like the whole cabin is just messed up. So let me show you guys how that sounds exactly so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. So yeah, I don't know if you guys heard that, but not only does it have a spaceship sound, but it sounds like a bunch of plastics are literally rubbing against each other. And it's literally just because of this. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Yeah, that is pretty much just flexing against the rim. I don't know if there's an actual fix for that. I don't know if that's just how it's supposed to sound. But I don't think it's supposed to sound like that. I think it looks, I think that's just super cheap sounding. So I'm hoping that is fixable. Something I just noticed actually, uh, the car just locked itself and it rolled up the windows, which is actually kind of cool because I had the windows rolled down and it rolled it up and it folded in the mirror. So the next couple of things I wanted to mention actually comes on the interior of the car. So some other issues worth addressing. Again, all these issues can get fixed with Tesla. It's just kind of worth, uh, you know, it's just kind of worth catching up front, especially if you're trying to buy a used one. Uh, maybe that can be a negotiation factor. Um, this car in particular, I actually saved $5,000 on buying it from the San Diego location because some of their inventory is heavily discounted for a brand new car. Um, that could be the reasons why actually, you know, this car has these imperfections, um, but I've seen people buy them straight from, you know, the inventory, custom spec them, and uh, long story short, they come with these issues as well. So I don't know, I feel like they got it, they saw the issues, they didn't want to fix it, they just discounted it, and then, you know, they'll sell anyways. So coming around to the interior of this car, which I absolutely love. Like I said, guys, beautiful infotainment system, beautiful interior. Um, this section right over here, uh, it looks great. It functions great, but this is supposed to stay up. So that's supposed to click and stay open. So now I'm trying to put my hand in here. It just, it just, you know, keeps wanting to close. That's not supposed to be like that. My dad has a model three as well, and that doesn't do that. So I actually have a service request for that as well to get repaired. And the next thing, which is actually pretty cool, um, is this right over here. This is a wireless charger for phones. Um, I think any minute now should show charging. Oh, I didn't set it down all the way. So now it should be charging any minute now. Well, so there you go. <laughs> it just started charging. That's super weird, but as you guys can see, it pretty much did not want to charge at that split second. So long story short, it is charging now, which is great. Uh, but yeah, issues I'm actually having with this charger is when you put two phones on here, basically both phones get really, really, really hot and they pretty much stop charging. 
I don't think that's safe for the phone. I don't think that's safe for the car. This pad gets really hot as well. Um, I don't think that's normal. So I did submit a service request for that as well. And if I just leave one phone on here, it will fully charge it, but my phone will just be piping hot. I don't think that's okay. I don't think that's good. Um, so I'm, I asked, that's another issue I'm actually having with the wireless charger. That's probably not something you guys can catch off the get go, just because uh, it did take me time to figure that out. When I was driving home from San Diego to Sacramento, um, I had issues with it probably three, four hours into the drive. So test driving your car, you're probably not gonna test drive it for three, four hours. So finding that out, you know, it's kind of a hit or miss, but it's definitely worth testing to make sure that that wireless charger works because it's actually one of the cool selling points for me on this car. I wanted a very, very, very technological advanced car and just a cool little, that's different from other cars. And that's one of those features that I really, really, really liked about Tesla's. So that to me is a very important feature for it to actually work. And last but not least, the final issue I'm having with this car is the range. So thankfully this is a 2023 model. I can actually charge it to maximum, which is super nice. And maximum is 272 miles again, which is pretty awesome. I absolutely love that. The negative thing is, is that if you leave this car off a charger overnight, you will lose 10 to 20 miles just literally having it sit overnight. I'm not even saying like it's sitting for like a day or two and you're driving. I'm saying literally overnight for eight hours, I will lose 10 to 15 miles of range. That's probably like one to 4% of, uh, of battery, which I don't know if is normal, but if it is, I don't like that. But if it isn't, I don't know, I'm gonna have that looked after and uh, see if that's an actual issue. It could just be because, you know, the fans are circulating or something, it's the car, you know, it, it's an electric car. It could be doing something in the interior to keep it uh, nice for me. So I might be punishing the car for this and it doesn't really deserve it, but I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, I can get into a million reasons why you guys should get a Tesla and why it's absolutely amazing. And yeah, even though it has all these issues, um, thankfully the bumper to bumper warranty for the first 50,000 miles, first four years, will cover everything I just mentioned other than that little paint defect and that paint defect right over there. And actually that reminds me, there's actually one more issue uh, that I realized, which is this headrest gap right over here. This has a really weird headrest gap right over here, like on this side, it's kind of sticking up higher than that. You can't really adjust that for some reason. So it's just kind of weird. I guess that pretty much falls more with like fit and finish wise. Again, the first couple of model three years, I believe the 2017 and the 2018 specifically, um, I seen a lot of people with like literally the door panels falling off, the, the plastics on the headliners, um, just pretty much sagging um, and just, having a bunch of issues with panel gaps, bumper gap, everything, including hood gaps. That's probably one of the most common Tesla uh, gaps that I've seen is hood gaps. Thankfully, again, the panels on this car, um, they figured it out. Uh, but again, I can't say that for every single car in every single year. So if you guys are a new viewer, thank you for checking out this channel. I'm going to be trying to make more videos on this bad boy right over here, but I also have a custom build going on back there. Not really a custom build, but a very, very, very unique and beautiful M car behind that cover over there that we're also going to be doing a custom build on on this channel. So super excited about that. Again, not just an EV person. If you guys love gasoline cars, especially BMW cars, we do a lot of that here on this YouTube channel. But I am gonna be modifying this Tesla and also I'm just doing a bunch of cool stuff to it because it's me and my wife's daily driver. I absolutely love this car. I put a, I already put about a thousand miles on it in the week that I've owned it. And I, again, I just really, really, really love this car. Knowing that I can go anywhere I want and not spend a single dollar in gas um, is probably one of the most fulfilling and satisfying feelings ever. Not to mention with all the warranties that the car has and the 100,000 mile warranty on the battery, with 150,000 mile warranty actually with California. I never have to worry about any battery issues, um, any mechanical issues. The car is pretty much good to go for the next eight to 10 years, according to the warranty. So um, just really good peace of mind. Again, for those of you guys who drive BMWs, you guys know that every single week, every single day, um, you have something to work on. I mean, every single night you have something to think about. Every single weekend you have something to work on. So that's just the BMW life. Again, I love them. It's amazing. It's good to have as a weekend car. It's good to have as a sidecar. But if you're trying to get to work the next day, I really, really, really think EV cars are the way to go. Just amazing daily, especially nowadays, they're actually making some super sick electric cars like the Taycan. I absolutely love the Taycan. It's a super sick car. They're making some sick hyper car um, hybrids um, that also use battery power to make it more efficient, to make it way faster. So again, I do think um, batteries, they have their perks. Um, they're not really meant for everyone, but I love it again as my daily driver. Serves its purpose. Um, and I feel like I'm gonna have to say this a lot just because uh, yeah, a lot of people from my current subscribers are gonna be like, Nor, what is this, bro? Just what is it? I have a V8 truck right over there that serves its purpose, you know, runs all the errands, does the engine stuff, you know, pretty much picks up large orders, things like that. I have the V8 project car, I have the V8 weekend car. So again, 
that's why, that's why. And for my current subscribers, I'm gonna make it a mission to actually encourage some of you guys to get an EV car in your lives, to save some money, um, and just relieve some of that stress off your guys' lives. I genuinely feel that I can find a way to persuade some of you guys. I hope I persuaded some of you guys in today's video just by looking at this car. It's honestly really, really, really nice. But yeah, hopefully with some more videos down the road, I could probably shift some of you guys' opinions on EVs and potentially get some of you guys to get some EV cars that we can modify together. Am I even thinking about getting a, one of these bad boys um, from auction, rebuilding it, and making it some kind of fun go-kart electric car. Things with EVs that are just different and I'm pretty excited for. But anyways, that's gonna go ahead and conclude the video. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to smash the like button. If you guys are getting a Tesla here soon um, because of all the tax incentives and you know the discounts, make sure to let me know what spec you guys think is the absolute spec to get when getting a Model 3 or Model Y. But without further ado guys, it's gonna have to conclude the video. I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.